is my specific person thinking about me? I really truly hate the affirmation that says, my specific person is thinking about me all the time. He thinks about me all day and night. He can't think about anybody else but me. I really hate any affirmations that say this because your specific person is actually thinking about you and you are thinking about them. And we're gonna talk about why you don't need to say this phrase and you need to get a new attitude instead. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful ducklings. Subscribe, smash the like button, share my videos. I will love you forever. I am a life coach with a 99.6% success rate in getting people back together with the love of their life. If you would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one or join my paid Facebook group where I go live, it's the only place I go live and I will be going live again on Sunday uh it's december something this first sunday in december please check out the links in the description below so why do you not need to say this affirmation and i am here to really truly simplify your life i am not picking on anybody i am saying that you do not need to say this affirmation because they are automatically thinking about you we have this thing called the one consciousness. And in the one consciousness, it puts out what you are thinking about, all right? So you're walking around going, my specific person is thinking about me. I know he's thinking about me, but he's not doing anything about it. So Jared's thinking about me, but he's not doing anything about it. Jared's thinking about me. so. Why isn't he coming forward and asking me to be his wife? Well, it's a double-sided coin. First of all, you've already said that they're thinking about you. You're already working on manifesting them. So you no longer have to say that phrase. Saying that phrase is absolutely useless at this point because thinking about you doesn't guarantee you the relationship. You need to create the relationship. But how do I know that they're thinking about you? Let's deal with this first. In the first thousand people that I've coached, 996 of them are actually in relationships and still in their relationships. They're four that are not out of that first thousand, but 999 of them that I have worked with have told me that their specific person was thinking about them. Their, spe that, their specific person wanted a relationship with them, but they felt something was holding them back. They weren't ready to come forward and be in that relationship yet, which is why I tell you guys, they're thinking about you. And I started this trend with they're thinking about you. And I have a TikTok video that has over 90,000 views on it. And it has questions like there's absolutely no scientific fact to back this up. You're actually not going to believe that they're thinking about you until you get told by that person I've been thinking about you this whole time. I love you, I miss you, I want to marry you, I wanna build a life with you. Until they physically say those words to you, you're not gonna believe this. So you have to affirm for the relationship because when I first started out in the Twin Flame community, I did psychic readings. One of my crazy gifts is channeling. So I can channel your person's higher self and I can do this either way. I can ask them specific questions from you or I can get specific questions from them that they ask of you. It's a weird gift. So for example, Jared, do you love Susie? Absolutely, I love Susie. She is amazing. Why aren't you coming forward? because she's constantly saying that I'm not coming forward. And I can't come forward until she starts saying, we're in a relationship, we're happily married. I want everything with her, but she's pushing me away. And my clients would say, I'm not pushing them away. I'm affirming for this relationship. I'm doing all the things to get this
this person back. Except they kept saying, but this person's not doing anything. So your words were what was holding them back. Now, sometimes the answers would be like, okay, so what is holding you back? Well, I'm not divorced yet. It's not final. And until the divorce is final, I don't want this person to think that I'm not committed to them. I want to end this cycle so that I can start a new cycle with that person. So I need it to be signed, sealed, done. So I can come on bended knee with a divorce certificate and a ring and say, will you marry me? I would get the weirdest statements when I was channeling because people wouldn't believe it. And then they would have a conversation with their person and they're like, yeah, this is what I'm waiting on. Like, I didn't think you wanted a relationship because your words were saying, but they're not showing up. So that one consciousness of thinking, you're saying, I can get whatever I want, but my specific person, you're putting it out there and they're picking it up. I can't be with this person yet. They don't want me. I, I love this person, but they don't want me. Like, I don't want to put myself out there because I don't think this person wants me. And now because your specific person is thinking you don't want them, all of a sudden, you're thinking they don't want you. You're thinking they don't want to be in a relationship with you because you're saying they're not showing up. They're saying, I don't want you. So he's feeling not wanted. Now you're feeling not wanted. And you wonder why you're in your own how loop. So manifesting, you need to assume that this person wants to be in a relationship with you and that there is no blocks, no problems. There is nothing that is stopping you from being in this relationship. So you have to push that out into the one consciousness. This person wants a relationship with me. They're showing up to be in the relationship with me. And don't tell me that you don't have to say he knocks on the door because a lot of you until that knock comes, isn't going to believe it again until they are literally standing in front of you saying I love you I want to be with you you are not going to believe it so throw that word belief out the window because you don't have to believe what you're manifesting because you tell a lie until it becomes true and when it becomes true you will believe it assume something means you assume something to be, you are saying that something is true. Believing is assuming something to be true. So you just have to persist and make this statement true. And people couldn't do that. So I started telling them, I'm helping you. So say, because Susie said so. I see you guys getting together. I see you being together once you get out of your own head. And it's not hard to get out of your own head, guys. Stop telling the story. You're only telling the story because you're saying it's hard to let go of the old story. It's hard. I have these doubts and it's so hard to let go of these doubts. Your focus is on the doubts. Your reticular activating system, the RAS, is what creates your reality. Not your subconscious, not your super subconscious, what you focus on grows. So when you keep telling the old story, they can't show up. And you know how hard it is to stop telling the old story? It's this hard. You just shut up and stop saying it. And if it pops up in your head, that's no longer serves you. Stage left, exit. Flush it down the toilet, throw it in the garbage. I'm done with that story. I'm going to stop talking about that story. I'm only going to talk about the good things that are being created in my reality. I have a friend and everybody has problems in their world. And there is a thing that runs around that I have 99 problems. Well, I have 99 problems and only one of them is mine. And that's getting my house clean. So I named what my only problem is, getting my house clean. And because I created a problem of getting my house clean, I'm in chaos. 
So in order to get my house clean, I have to be entitled. I have to be entitled to have my house clean. I have to be privileged. I have to be spoiled. I have to be blessed. It's not the problem is my house is a mess. The solution is what you need to do. My house is always clean. I'm a neat freak. My house is always clean. Your house isn't just the physical place you live in. It is your mental place. And when you are talking about the fact that you can't have this person because they're with somebody else, you're focusing on a third party and they don't want you. So they're hearing, be with the third party because I don't want you. You're going to stop talking about the third party when they think that. Because I actually got told that by one person's higher self. They're always saying I'm with somebody else, so I might as well be with somebody else because they don't want me. If they wanted me, why would they say that I'm with somebody else? Your words really matter. And the attitude that you need is entitlement. And because you are entitled to this relationship, I am entitled to be in a relationship. This was given to me. This desire to be married to Jared was given to me from somewhere. I saw him and I went, holy crap, I'm going to marry that guy one day. I was given a desire. It's already done. We get in our own way because we talk about, well, what has to be different? They need to change. They got to be present. They got to show up. They got to do this. But the attitude of entitlement, it's, I'm entitled to get this. It's not I'm worthy and I'm deserving because think about this. This is why a narcissist always gets what they want. They're entitled. They're privileged. In their mind, they're privileged. So you walk into a restaurant and it's, the first day of the restaurant opening and it has a two hour line out the door for tables and you're entitled. You walk up and you say a uh, table for two and you get sat immediately. And there's people that are waiting for two hours that haven't even been sat. That's entitled. That's privileged or spoiled, blessed, lucky, whatever words you want to use. So why am I spoiled? The simple phrase that I teach gives you that entitlement attitude. I always get what I want because I am entitled to it. Not that I deserve it. Not that I'm worthy of it because the narcissist doesn't care if they're worthy or deserving. But the things that I've learned being with the narcissist for 30 years I'm teaching you guys how to do in a good way. And trust me, I know all of my teachings are used for bad. Every teaching can be used for bad. It can be used for revenge, for manipulation. I mean, the guy that I used to date for six years told me point blank. You're Cupid. But in reality, you teach people how to manipulate the universe to get what you want. I manipulate the universe to get what I want. So I'm entitled to get what I want so I can manipulate the universe to get it. Because that's what we're doing. But you're saying they're with the third party. You're manipulating the universe to give them somebody else. So congratulations. You manifested them being with the third party. And I know that sounds horrible. But you keep talking about the third party. You keep talking about problems. You keep talking about they're not showing up. You keep talking about they're not present. Creation is done. The moment you said it, it's done. It's yours. How do you bring it in? With the attitude that you get it no matter what. No matter what, I get this. That's where these people go, I'm God, and they do what I say. It's because I am God isn't I created the entire universe. It is an attitude that I get whatever I want, and people do 
whatever I want. And because they're actually saying it, I'm God. He does whatever I say. He's doing exactly what she says. And if he's going, I'm God, and she does whatever I say, she's going to do that. You are letting circumstances that don't have anything to do with you be 99 of your problems. When your one problem is you don't feel entitled to this relationship. Or you think being entitled is narcissistic. Or you think that saying that you are entitled to this relationship is pure manipulation. It is all of it and absolutely none of it. Because that person is thinking about you. They want to be with you. And your words are bringing them in or chasing them away. So either way, you're manipulating the universe. So why not manipulate it to your advantage and say that I'm entitled to this relationship. I'm entitled to be rich. Oh my gosh, I had the thought of being a millionaire. Done. It's already done. I'm a millionaire. It's done. I'm a millionaire. It's done. I'm entitled to be a millionaire. Show me the money. I'm spoiled. I'm a millionaire. The universe is showing me the money. I'm blessed. I'm a millionaire. The universe is showing me the money. I'm lucky. I'm a millionaire and the universe is showing me the money. Simple phrases, guys. That's how narcissists get whatever they want. And we all know narcissists. And everybody has some narcissistic tendencies. Because you can be Princess Diana. And you are privileged. You are royal. The world is your oyster. And you're still nice. But when you go somewhere... You know, as soon as you walk in the door, you're going to be sat. She knew as soon as she became Princess Dice, her line waiting days was over. She was going to go to the front of the line and she was going to be able to sit down. Celebrities do it all the time. They walk into a restaurant and they get seated immediately because they are a celebrity. Well, I'm a celebrity. I always get seated. I never have to wait in line. People who double their money. I'm always doubling my money. I have cash in my wallet and I always double the cash in my wallet. I spend money and that money's back in my account by the end of the day. When I worked at a bank, I had a guy tell me that he had to write a check for $100,000. And it was back in his account. He said, I said, invest it. Go buy yourself something nice. Spend it. He goes, it doesn't matter. It always comes back. I spend $100,000, I get $100,000 back. I always get it back, whatever I spend. Entitled. And then his words are saying, I'm entitled to money. And whenever I spend it, it always comes back. So it always comes back into his account. No matter what he did. He could write a check for the balance of his account, put it at a zero balance, and I guarantee you it's going to be right back up where it was really fast because it always comes back. That is why I tell you to choose your words wisely. Focus on the good because they're thinking about you. You're entitled to this relationship and your words are either creating it or they're creating it not showing up for you in the way that you want. I love you guys. Have an absolutely positively amazing day. And as always, leave me a comment and let me know how I am drastically changing your life for the better.